Now, I'm sure the name Pathé is familiar to you. In fact, there may be a few amongst you who remember it as far back as 1909. Yes, 1909. For well, that's when the company was started by the brothers Charles and Emile Pathé, who came over from Paris to produce the first British newsreel. Well, the company has produced countless newsreels, short films such as the famous Pathé Victorial, documentaries, second feature films, including the very successful scrapbook series, and, well, many, many other films. Now, it takes quite an organization to produce films like these, but then Pathé is quite an organization within an organization. Digital files. Words, movement, action, sound, music, photography, ready for instant access by everybody worldwide. In the digital world, images and sounds are captured and stored as electronic bits of information, a formless collection of charged binary data. Telecine is a method of capturing the images and sound from film and turning them into digits or video and audio. It's to use a Telecine machine like this. This is called a, a Spirit HD Telecine. It can work in high definition and it can work in standard definition and it can make files as well as video. What we actually do is we enable that our clients, uh, who generally speaking are either archives trying to preserve their materials, their film materials, onto modern digital formats, for documentary makers, feature filmmakers, corporate videos, those kind of clients, so that they can use clips that they've gleaned from the archives so that they can take them away and edit them. Hopefully they, they will then put out a finished documentary or film. These pictures made from a Pathé news plane less than four hours before the tragedy show the world's largest airship heading for Lakehurst, New Jersey. Increasingly, this reservoir of structureless digital detail is accessed from the electronic cloud, an abstraction that draws information from countless remote networks of digital storage and, just as rain forms and falls from nature's clouds, so this digital information is drawn down and given shape by a diversity of devices. From the ground, you can see the forward control cabin from which the ship is operating. Today, we can view life as it was lived over 100 years ago. The events and happenings of an age long past. The conflicts, the people, the happenings, the occasions, the significant and the trivial that have helped to shape our modern world. Back to 1896, when the internal combustion engine was just as much a dream as the atomic engine of tomorrow. Or right up to today's beauty queen competing for her crown. And all captured on film. Cellulose film spooling through a cine camera, capturing light and movement. It's thanks to film archive collections that we still have access to so much of our visual history. The major British newsreel film archive, British Pathé, holds moving pictures from the dawn of the last century. basic statistics of the British Pathé archive are that it started in 1896 and finished in 1976. That's a sum total of 3,500 hours and covers 90,000 individual stories, covering everything from that time period. Over the years, the film archives have been transferring their collections into digital formats. The advantages of uh, digitising the film, first of all, of course, storage. It means that you can take each individual story, each individual reel as, an in, as a file and store it in a different location, so it's ease of accessibility. The second thing, it protects the assets for ever and a day. Uh, of course, uh, film 
uh, nitrate safety film it, it's a delicate item and if it's handled every day it can degrade whereas if you're using a, a, a file then you can use it as much as you like and it doesn't degrade. From Moscow in 1924 a newsreel coverage of Lenin's funeral one of the few authentic things that managed to get out of Moscow in the days when the Stalin star first began to outdazzle possible competitors. When you get modern day archivists looking at the film stories, they can re-catalogue it uh, in a way that's appropriate for today. The original archivists probably did a shot list that was based on uh, what was on the screen. It didn't have any uh, retrospective view. But the advantage of, of archivists uh, looking at a film retrospectively and doing the metadata and the descriptions as they've done today, uh, it means that they can put a different slant on it. They can describe what's on the film, who's in the pictures, what they were doing, put it into some sort of historical context. And so with the coronation of King George VI in 1937, we come to our own decade. From the broad canvas of newsreel reporting, we turn to the intimate studies of great figures in history. British Pathé's primary job now is licensing footage to program makers. And we do that very successfully to programmers and program makers all around the world. It means that they can have immediate access to the archive, they can view it online, and, uh, and they can take delivery of it very, very quickly in the format that they require. Uh, but also, once we'd done this, we found that the general public loved viewing this. So, uh, you know, they came in their thousands, tens of thousands every day. And so we made the whole archive available to the general public, free of charge to view. And it's amazing. We get emails in every single day from people who've seen their aunties, their uncles, even themselves as young children. Uh, and they love this. Does this mean that once digitised, the film is redundant, superfluous to requirements? The advantages of keeping the, the original film are that we know that it will last more than 100 years. We've already proved that videotape will not last more than 30 or 40 years and we don't know yet about the digital storage methods. Uh, we don't know how long they'll last, no one knows that. 35mm film being very high resolution, you can capture the, the picture and the sound on that film and you know that you can store it for at least 100 years, maybe 200. We'll have to wait and see. This, ladies and gentlemen, is London. Swinging London, it's been called, though some people might find a different adjective. When the original digitization was done, it was done to a certain format, but largely speaking, that format has now become obsolete. And so we keep having to return to the, uh, to the original film for program makers, broadcasters who want to transfer and create a film in high definition format. Now, of course, we don't know what formats are going to come around the corner. Uh, there could be new formats next year, year after, in 10 years time. So if you like, the original asset that you see on these shelves here, these are the crown jewels. They are the finest format that there are. And we will keep returning to them and keeping them in the condition that they are originally in so that we can create new formats for program makers for whoever in years to come. And now to one of Oxford Street's most unpretentious but important buildings, Pathé House. Here, cornering Water Street, is the home of Pathé's short film enterprises, the newsreel, the pictorial, the hosts of documentaries and entertainment shorts. Here too is the oldest and largest film library in Europe, a treasure house of headlines and highlights that becomes available now to those using the Pathé organization. On film, our yesterdays endure in these cans. And here too will be preserved the highlights of today for the generations to come. But all this original film is bulky. This is 35mm film, 1,000 foot. It contains 10 minutes of moving images. Now compare that to today. Our camera filming this can record up to four hours worth of high definition visuals on a small card that size. Storage of all this bulky original material in the so-called digital cloud is clearly out of the question. The British Pathé Newsreel Archive has 25 million feet of film. That's a major storage problem. A problem that is not helped by much of the material being highly flammable. Vietnam. United States helicopter gunships backed up ground forces in a strong assault on a Viet Cong position only three miles from Saigon's Tan Son Nut Air Base. 
U.S. and South Vietnamese forces headquarters are located on the airfield's perimeter. The communists had showered the HQ and surrounding area with rockets and mortar bombs. The older film stock has a cellulose nitrate base, a highly flammable, volatile material used as an explosive propellant in such things as gun cotton. Unfortunately, nitrate film does have other drawbacks. Not only being extremely flammable, but it also decomposes after several decades, giving off nitric acid fumes, which accelerates decay, leaving the film sticky and goo-like, and ultimately turning into dust. This decay can be held in check by storage in stable, temperature-controlled conditions. Unfortunately, it is an ongoing problem for all major film archives. Film material from the 1950s onward used stable, non-flammable acetate safety stock. I think the, the archive is still largely unexplored. Remember you're talking about 90,000 individual film items. If you were to watch one hour of the British Pathé archive a day, it would take you 10 years to view the entire archive. This is a can containing part of the original negative shot for the coronation in 1953. And this is a sensation that a digital file can never duplicate. This is part of the original film that was running through the cameras on that day. Light from that day passed through the lens of the camera and struck the light sensitive emulsion on this piece of film. No matter how many copies are made from this piece of film, no matter how many years down the line, it is the light on that day captured on this film that is the source of those copies, whether film material or digital. The hour of 11 is approaching. Not only in London, but in every corner of the world, the prayers and thoughts of the people center upon this young, queenly figure. The archive is very famous for, its, for, uh, for capturing the, the big state occasions, the big events in history. And who bears them with such royal grace. This girl prefers a secular device, a portable grindstone to wit, or rather to wet. But British Pathé was famous for also capturing the human interest stories, those events uh, that happened down people's streets or uh, quirky stories about people in little villages. They went up and down the country. All you need, blokes, is a brain, a bike, a basket, a better half, a baby, and a bit of time off. In fact, they went all around the world filming ordinary people doing ordinary things, and that actually is the great strength of the archive. One of the most important ways that we can use film is to actually see the way that people lived in their period, in their time. Quite often what you see all the time are wars and news events, and they're, although they're very, very important, it's also really important to know how people lived through those wars, what their conditions of life were like. And uh, also, obviously, in the peacetime, you know, the pleasant home movies that people shot about a day at the beach in 1920, cause a huge amount of interest when people watch them now, almost 100 years later. There's also something else as well, which is how the archive is interpreted. Uh, and filmmakers have different ways of interpreting things uh, all the time. So it can be used and explored and discovered over and over again. We're very pleased. Personally, the British Pathé archive means a great deal to me. And it means a lot to the people who work for British Pathé. We love archive, all of us. We work and breathe it every single day. And we, we love uh, working with producers, creating these wonderful TV programs, and helping the general public find footage that they've never uh, perhaps seen before. 1926, I'll never forget it. Neither will the Australians. Hobbs and Sutcliffe, the whole team, in fact, were the heroes of the hour. But there's something deeper as well. I think all of us feel how important it is to keep a record of the past. Uh, and it's through this exploitation and 
continual working of the archive that we're also protecting it because it's an expensive business keeping an archive storage uh, all those things that are associated with it and it's through the commercialization of that archive that it protects it for the, for the future so we very much believe uh, and personally I very much believe that it, it's an asset that has to be worked so that it can be protected for future generations behind the cameramen the experts the entertainment visualizers the editors and cutters and joiners and all the other technicians and organizers who help to produce more than 250 short films a year. A total output equal to more than 20 full-length feature films. It's not just cans of film stored here. It is our background. It is the very light of our past. It's the panorama of a century. As I said before, it's quite an organization and it's now available to you.